Ever feel like you're doing this teaching thing alone? You don't have to be. Share Teaching is all about sharing the workload through the power of collaboration and teamwork. Together, we'll walk through all the difficult parts of teaching and learn how to streamline our processes, fine tune our time management, and develop a more manageable workload. If that sounds like a dream come true to you, then welcome to the Shared Teaching Podcast. Let's share in the teaching to make those dreams a reality. Now here's today's Shared Teaching. Hello and welcome back to the Shared Teaching Podcast. I'm your host, Susan, creator and founder of Shared Teaching. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thank you for coming back and listening to another episode. This is episode 91, where we're going to talk about using a writing pre-assessment. And before we get started, I do want to share a freebie that I have that goes along with this, and that is a kindergarten through third grade writing skills progression. So it goes through each grade level and what they need to learn in the different parts of the writing process for opinion writing, narrative writing, and expository writing. So you want to make sure you get that. It is sharedteaching.com forward slash writing dash skills dash progression. Again, it is a free download and I will have the link in the show notes. So when you're using our writing pre-assessment, it's going to be the most important first step in your writing plans. You want to do this before anything else, because just like other subjects like reading and math, you want to have the pre-assessment to inform your direction for your lessons. So why do we even want to use one? Besides, it informs your your decisions for what lessons you're going to teach. But teaching writing is a hard subject for a lot of teachers, especially because we're often not given training in it. It's a neglected subject when we're going through our teaching programs. At least it was for me. And we don't usually have a set curriculum in our schools to teach writing. Sometimes it's embedded within our reading curriculum, and it might be just like a one-off assignment that they have to respond to the reading in some way. That's not really teaching writing. To me, teaching writing is teaching them to write like an author would. And I don't think embedding writing programs within other curriculum really helps to do that. For example, if you're writing about a science experiment you just did, great, maybe they're learning how to write their sentences and format punctuation, but are they really learning the skill of writing? That's kind of my soapbox. So I'm going to move away from that and continue with today's episode. And a lot of times I hear from teachers, where do I even start? If you don't have that curriculum, you don't have that guidance, you don't have that skill set, this can be really, really tricky. So where I start is using a pre-assessment for writing, and this will help establish a baseline of our students' skills. The pre-assessment will help provide that starting point for your lessons so that you don't have to ask, where do I start? Because you'll know. Now, I like to use a pre-assessment before any new writing unit. Doing this helps me see exactly what skills my students have, or maybe don't have, that are specific to one genre. When we pre-assess, we can also confidently see whether our lessons are having an impact with our students. So again, we want to make sure we have some kind of publishing at the end of a unit, and then you're going to compare that to the pre-assessment. So you don't have to give the same pre-assessment as your final piece because you're going to be looking for the same things and it's okay that it's not the exact same prompt. I don't use the same prompt unless my school requires it and that's a whole nother story. Okay, now what you're going to wanna use for a writing pre-assessment is a prompt that is chosen specifically for the style of writing that you are going to be assessing. For example, beginning of the school year is coming up and I always start my narrative writing unit first because it's the easiest for students to talk and write about themselves. So you want to start with personal narrative if you don't have a direction and you're not told what you have to start with. This is a good one to start with. 
Now, my narrative writing unit is split between personal narratives and fictional narratives. So I choose the personal narratives, and then depending on how my students are doing, I will either hold off on teaching the fictional narratives till later in the year, or I will just continue through the remainder of the unit and teach the fictional narratives after the personal narratives. But since personal narratives come first, I will give my students a prompt to tell me about an event in their life. So I'm only assessing the personal narrative part of my unit. I'm not assessing the fictional narrative part at the same time. They're very separate. So my favorite prompt for personal narratives is tell me about the best day of your life. Although I usually want pre-assessments to involve no additional teaching or guiding from my students, I like to go around the room and have students share what they will write about. So maybe I'm just standing in the front of the class and I'm picking on students raising their hands saying, what do you think is the best day of your life? Can you tell me a little bit about it? And as they're sharing, it's going to help those struggling writers that sit there forever with no idea what to write about get an idea just by listening to their peers share. Now, I don't really consider this teaching because I haven't told them what exactly a narrative is. I'm not telling them what I'm looking for in terms of punctuation and sentences. I'm not telling them anything else other than this is your topic. And then they are just sharing among themselves what they think is that topic. I hope that makes sense. Now, when I begin teaching a different writing unit, I will do another pre-assessment. So my fiction writing has a different pre-assessment. And of course, it's going to be aligned to that style of writing that I will start teaching before I teach it. (laughs) So for example, opinion writing, I might choose a prompt asking students to give their thoughts on a polarizing topic or choose between two things. An example might be, do you think we should have to wear uniforms in school? That's kind of polarizing. A lot of students either feel one way or another. Or... If you had to pick one, would you rather have a dog or a cat for a pet? So that's choosing between two things. And then that's going to help guide them in writing that opinion writing. You want to see, do they know introductions? Do they know how to support their reasons? And that's going to lead you into what you need to teach. So for informative writing, that's kind of tricky to pre-assess, especially in the early primary grades, and I'm thinking kindergarten, first, second. But choosing a prompt about a topic your students already know is going to be key. So for example, if you just finished studying about weather and science, your topic might ask students about different types of weather. Now, if you haven't taught any kind of science or social studies that's going to work for your informative writing pre-assessment, you might want to consider asking the grade teachers below you. So if you teach second, you're going to go to the first grade um, team and you're going to ask them, hey, what are some big units you guys studied last year? And then that can inform your pre-assessment writing topic. So the next thing you want to do is choose the proper paper format. So for younger students, choosing the proper paper can kind of guide them into remembering what they've been previously taught. So it's kind of a little trick. (laughs) If students are given a paper with a box at the top for a picture and lines underneath to write, chances are they will write a story that matches their picture and they will already know, oh, I draw a picture in this box because it's familiar. They've probably seen it many times. If you provide a writing paper that has several boxes for text features, and then you give them a prompt that has something to do with informative writing, then that's going to help guide your students to create a nonfiction writing piece that has some kind of text features in those boxes. And if they're just drawing a bunch of pictures about their topic, then you know you have to hit the text features hard because maybe they don't know which different text features they can put in those boxes. Now let's talk about grading the pre-assessment, which is always the dread, right? Because writing can take so long to grade. So once students have turned in their pre-assessment, you're going to want to have to grade it because you have to know where they are. So for the first sample of the year, the beginning of the school year, I use a rubric to formally grade the writing. And the rubric I use is based on a personal narrative. 
Now, this is part of my school's requirements because they want us to assess students on their writing three times a year using the exact same prompt and using the exact same rubric to grade each of those writing samples so we can see how they progress throughout the year. Now, for my personal requirements, and if this is you and you don't have a requirement from your school, I like to just look over the student's writing sample and jot a few notes. So I recommend using a spreadsheet or a checklist. So on the left maybe are their names and on the right is a space to write what their strengths are or what they need to work on. So just a simple table that you can create in PowerPoint or whatever, I I always use PowerPoint because that's very easy for me to say insert table. And then I do the two lines and then zoop, there it is. And then I just add my students' names to it. Or maybe if you have a roster you can print out that is just blank with only the names, I use those a lot for my grading, then that also will give you spaces to write strengths and weaknesses. So you could do a plus for strengths and minus for weaknesses. And then you can just jot down like beginning sentence or capitals, periods. Maybe they don't have an intro. So maybe that goes under the minus sign. They're missing the intro. And then that's going to allow you to look at that roster and that spreadsheet and see the whole class at a glance, what they need or what they already have. And then if the majority of that class has it, then you're going to just be teaching it in small groups or one-to-one conferences. But if most of the class is missing punctuation in their sentences, you know that that is a lesson that you're going to want to front load at the beginning of the school year right up front, right off the bat and teach them those skills that they need to be successful in writing their sentences. So again, when you're using a pre-assessment, you're going to want to choose the correct paper, and then you're going to want to choose a prompt that aligns with what style of writing you are going to teach. And then you're going to want to grade it either informally or formally using a rubric or not. And the writing skills progression that I mentioned at the beginning of this episode is a really great helper in determining what skills you should be looking at when you're looking at that piece of paper after they've turned in their pre-assessment. So again, you can find that at sharedteaching.com forward slash writing dash skills dash progression. And if you are listening to this on your favorite podcast player, you should be able to just click the link that says free writing skills progression and go straight to that. And then you can get that free download. Otherwise, you can always go to shareteaching.com forward slash podcast or sorry, forward slash share dash teaching dot podcast. <laughs> One of these days I might shorten it. <laughs> and then you can get all the links and peruse your favorite episodes from there. So thank you so much for listening and don't forget to tune in on Saturday for our very last summer episode on a Saturday. I'm very sad my summer is drawing to a close, but I'm also very excited for the new year and to see what it holds. So thank you so much for listening. Bye for now. If you've loved this show, then join me in sharing the teaching, hitting that subscribe button, and leaving us a review on iTunes. So we can be found by more teachers like you who are ready to start sharing the workload. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Find new episodes each week on shareteaching.com. Thanks for listening to the Share Teaching Podcast. Podcast.